What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we got another free response. This came on the 2018 exam. Free response question. Let's work through the solution right now. The dish shown above spins about an axle at the center. The student's experiments reveal that while the disc is spinning, friction between the axle and the disc exerts a constant torque on the disc. Okay, so that constant, that's going to be very important. At time zero, the disc has some counterclockwise angular velocity. And guys, counterclockwise is always positive. It would be really cool and positive if we can go back in time. The disc later comes to rest at T1. On the grid to the left, sketch the graph that could represent the disc angular velocity as a function of time from time zero until it comes to rest. So we started with some positive angular speed. We ended at rest and we had a constant torque. So the slope, the fancy physics word for slope for a V versus T graph is acceleration. So if F net, the torque force is constant, that means that A has to also be constant but it's gonna be negative because it slows the object down. So we're just gonna have a straight linear line that acts just like this. On the right, sketch the disc angular acceleration as a function of time. Well, once again, if I have a constant F net, I have an acceleration, but it needs to be negative. So draw it anywhere. This is the negative quadrant. It doesn't matter where you draw it. It's gonna be a straight, constant acceleration. The magnitude of the frictional torque exerted is given by this. Derive an equation for the rotational inertia I in terms of torque, the initial angular speed, time, and any physical constants. Now, I think I can do this two ways. Let's try the first way. I know that Newton's second law for rotation is written as torque equals I alpha, where I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the angular acceleration. I know that alpha also equals a change in angular speed over time. So if I substitute that in, I can say that torque equals I times omega final minus omega initial over T, but they told us that this comes to rest. So I can say that T torque equals I times omega naught over T. I can therefore equal torque times time over W naught. But another way, I think momentum is going to be conserved here because it's going to be no outside torque. So I could say that angular momentum equals I omega as well. And to change an object's momentum, I can add a torque and some change in time. So if I do some torque and some change in time to change angular momentum, I would do that by saying I omega. So then I could say that I once again is torque times time over omega. So yeah, you could do those both ways. If momentum is conserved, you can do this one. In this case it is. Awesome, looks like we get to sketch some more graphs. In another experiment, the disc is initial velocity okay, that's great. So we have some positive uh, omega that's gonna start as well again. The students are dripping oil on the contact surface to reduce friction. That's great. As time passes, more and more oil reaches the contact surface, reducing the friction even further. But they start doing that at time one half. So this is where we're going to have some oil that's going to reduce the force of friction. On the grid on the left, sketch the graph that could represent the disk angular velocity as a function of time, which is the time at which this comes to rest part A. Okay, so it's not going to come to no speed. So I can't go down to the x-axis, but I know for the first part, we are going to have some constant decrease in speed, right? Constant acceleration because the friction force did not change. But then once it changed we know that the friction force went down. Now, if there's no friction force, there's gonna be no change in speed. So the change in speed is gonna become a little less steep. So I'm gonna kinda of like veer off this way and not be as steep, right? Because if there was no friction, I would remain, my speed would be constant. So I'm approaching a more constant speed. On the one on the right, sketch this angular acceleration as a function of time. So we had some constant acceleration Right, but then it kind of decreased that by adding the oil, it decreased the acceleration, but it didn't increase it to frictionless. So once again, make sure you don't hit the x-axis, but it did something like this. We had a constant acceleration, and then the oil decreased that acceleration over time. And once again, why did I decrease acceleration? Because acceleration equals F net over T. So if this friction force is going down, so does acceleration. It approaches zero. Student trying to mathematically model the magnitude of the torque exerted on the axle and the disc and when the oil is presented from T 
greater than two and a half. So after that one half, we start adding oil. So you're write down the formula for two equations. Each would include a positive constant C1 or plus C2 with appropriate units. Okay. Which equation better mathematically models this experiment? So if I look at this, I have some torque and some constant. So this says as T goes up, my torque force goes up. So this is no good. Because that is not true. As time went on, my torque force got less because I added oil. Where that shows true here, this says as time increased and I added oil, the torque force on the system went down because it became more frictionless. So that's just going to be, this one better fits. And the reason why, like I said, if I add oil, that decreases F net. It decreases friction, so that decreases F net. And that F net is what's causing the torque, so that decreases torque. Where in equation one, when I add oil, they're saying as time goes on, the torque force increases, which would say that friction increased. So that's not true. I hope this helped, guys. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up. I'll catch you on the next solution.